Tao Te Ching, written by Lao Tzu, translation by J. H. MacDonald, 1996. Chapter 1. The Tao that can be described is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be spoken is not the eternal name. The nameless is the boundary of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of creation. Freedom from desire, you can see the hidden mystery. By having desire, you can only see what is visibly real. Yet mystery and reality emerge from the same source. This source is called darkness. Darkness born from darkness, the beginning of all understanding. Chapter 2 When people see things as beautiful, ugliness is created. When people see things as good, evil is created. Being and non-being produce each other. Difficult and easy complement each other. Long and short define each other. High and low oppose each other. Fore and aft follow each other. Therefore the master can act without doing anything and teach without saying a word. Things come her way and she does not stop them. Things leave and she lets them go. She has without possessing and acts without any expectations. When her work is done, she takes no credit. That is why it will last forever. Chapter 3 If you overly esteem talented individuals, people will become overly competitive. If you overvalue possessions, people will begin to steal. Do not display your treasures or people will become envious. The master leads by emptying people's minds, filling their bellies, weakening their ambitions, and making them become strong. Preferring simplicity and freedom from desires, avoiding the pitfalls of knowledge and wrong action. For those who practice not doing, everything will fall into place. Chapter 4 The Tao is like an empty container. It can never be emptied and can never be filled. Infinitely deep, it is the source of all things. It dulls the sharp, unties the knotted, shades the lighted, and unites all creation with dust. It is hidden but always present. I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than the concept of God. Chapter 5 Heaven and earth are impartial. They treat all creation as straw dogs. The master does not take sides. She treats everyone like a straw dog. The space between heaven and earth is like a bellows. It is empty, yet has not lost its power. The more it is used, the more it produces. The more you talk of it, the less you comprehend. It is better not to speak of things you do not understand. Chapter 6 The spirit of emptiness is immortal. It is called the Great Mother because it gives birth to heaven and earth. It is like a vapor, barely seen but always present. Use it effortlessly. Chapter 7 The Tao of heaven is eternal, and the earth is long-enduring. Why are they long-enduring? They do not live for themselves, thus they are present for all beings. The Master puts herself last and finds herself in the place of authority. She detaches herself from all things, therefore she is united with all things. She gives no thought of self. She is perfectly fulfilled. Chapter 8 The supreme good is like water, which benefits all of creation without trying to compete with it. It gathers in unpopular places, Thus, it is like the Tao. The location makes the dwelling good. Depth of understanding makes the mind good. A kind heart makes the giving good. Integrity makes the government good. Accomplishments make the labors good. Proper timing makes a decision good. Only when there is no competition will we all live in peace. 
Chapter 9 It is easier to carry an empty cup than one that is filled to the brim. The sharper the knife, the easier it is to dull. The more wealth you possess, the harder it is to protect. Pride brings its own trouble. When you have accomplished your goal, simply walk away. This is the pathway to heaven. Chapter 10 Nurture the darkness of your soul until you become whole. Can you do this and not fail? Can you focus your life breath until you become supple as a newborn child? While you cleanse your inner vision, will you be found without fault? Can you love people and lead them without forcing your will on them? When heaven gives and takes away, can you be content with the outcome? When you understand all things, can you step back from your own understanding? Giving birth and nourishing, making without possessing, expecting nothing in return. To grow, yet not to control. This is the mysterious virtue. Chapter 11 Thirty spokes are joined together in a wheel, but it is the center hole that allows the wheel to function. We mold clay into a pot, but it is the emptiness inside that makes the vessel useful. We fashion wood for a house, but it is the emptiness inside that makes it livable. We work with the substantial, but the emptiness is what we use. Chapter 12 Five colors blind the eye. Five notes deafen the ear. Five flavors make the palate go stale. Too much activity deranges the mind. Too much wealth causes crime. The master acts on what she feels and not what she sees. She shuns the latter and prefers to seek the former. Chapter 13 Success is as dangerous as failure and we are often our own worst enemy. What does it mean that success is as dangerous as failure? He who is superior is also someone's subordinate. Receiving favor and losing it both cause alarm. That is what is meant by success is as dangerous as failure. What does it mean that we are often our own worst enemy? The reason I have an enemy is because I have self. If I no longer had a self, I would no longer have an enemy. Love the whole world as if it were yourself. Then you will truly care for all things. Chapter 14 Look for it and it can't be seen. Listen for it and it can't be heard. Grasp for it and it can't be caught. These three cannot be further described, so we treat them as the one. Its highest is not bright, its depths are not dark. Unending, unnameable, it returns to nothingness. Formless forms and imageless images, subtle beyond our understanding. Approach it and you will not see a beginning. Follow it and there will be no end. When we grasp the Tao of the Ancient Ones, we can use it to direct our life today. To know the ancient origin of Tao, is the beginning of wisdom. Chapter 15 The sages of old were profound and knew the ways of subtlety and discernment. Their wisdom is beyond our comprehension. Because their knowledge was so far superior, I can only give a poor description. They were careful as someone crossing a frozen stream in winter, alert as if surrounded on all sides by the enemy courteous as a guest, fluid as melting ice, whole as an uncarved block of wood, receptive as a valley, turbid as muddied water. Who can be still until their mud settles and the water is cleared by itself? Can you remain tranquil until right action occurs by itself? The master doesn't seek fulfillment, for only those who are not full are able to be used, which brings the feeling of completeness.